Eagle is back. Two weeks ago, the Tennessee Volunteers knocked the Tigers from their number one perch by stopping the Bo Jackson Heisman Express. But last week, Auburn roared back. Under the lights at home against the tough Ole Miss squad, the Tigers dominated with Bo Jackson leading the way. They rolled up 606 yards of total offense, 39 first downs, and 41 points, all without ever having to punt. And on defense, the Tigers were just as effective, allowing the Rebels just nine total yards for the entire game, a 41 to nothing shutout. And today, the Tigers will vent their wrath on fourth-ranked Florida State. Bobby Bowden Seminoles have been impressive, knocking off Nebraska in Lincoln and not allowing a touchdown in the second half of any game this year. Last year's Auburn FSU tilt was college football at its most exciting, with the Tigers scoring the winning touchdown in the last minute. Two tight ends for Washington. He's going to pitch to forward, tries to get outside. He dies for the pylon. He's in! He's in! He's in! Auburn held on for a wild 42-41 victory in that contest, but 1985 shootout on the Plains begins just moments from now. Florida State versus Auburn. <laughs> Turner Network Television presents Super Football Saturday. Today, the 11th-ranked Auburn Tigers host the 4th-ranked Seminoles of Florida State. Brought to you by Buick. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. By Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? And by Valvoline Fourguard. The motor oil for today's harder-working four-cylinder engines. In the name of Christ Jesus, your son who threw blood on the cross. You're hearing the invocation at Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, where today Florida State University and the Tigers of Auburn set to do battle. 72,169 folks, 10,000 of whom are up from Tallahassee. Hi, everybody. It's Bob Neal and Tim Foley. Tim, they call Bobby Bowden the king of the road because his Seminoles are tough on the road, but they have never won here at Jordan-Hare, and it could be even tougher today. Auburn's back, and they seem to have settled on a quarterback, Pat Washington. They've been playing kind of quarterback roulette, but uh, I think in an attempt to reduce the amount of stakes they're having on offense, Pat Dye has gone with maturity and stability, taking Pat Washington, and I think he's going to help in eliminating those mistakes. And Bo Jackson, as you watch Pat Washington in action here, is the straw that stirs the Auburn drink, as they've been saying for several years now. Bo Jackson leads the nation in rushing, and he's rushed more than the entire Florida State backfield uh, in these first four games. Florida State, however, may have a defense good enough to stop him. That'll at least be their first priority to stop Jackson out of the eye. I don't, I don't think, and, I, and you'll agree with this, I'm sure, out there, you can't stop a back like Bo Jackson. He's going to run on you. The idea is to try to eliminate the big play. And as a linebacker, react when the ball's handed to Jackson. But one of the things you have to be aware of is the play pass, and Auburn may use that today. And Paul McGowan leads the two very good inside linebackers, McGowan and Fred Jones. Here out of the eye, you can see Memphis State had a real problem with the Florida State defensive team. Offensively, Florida State has had kind of a quarterback merry-go-round, but Danny McManus will start there. Yep, the quarterback situation at Florida State has been a lot different. Injuries have kind of dictated it. They're coming back with Danny McManus, and if he's been knocked out of two football games, and if I'm on Auburn's defense, well, I'm going to pressure him. I'm going to see if I can get to him early and try to rattle him up. If he's got time to throw to Darren Holloman and Hassan Jones, it's going to be a long afternoon for Auburn. And I might remind everyone that Auburn's defensive team, overlooked a little bit by the press, is number one in total defense in the Southeastern Conference, and they are very good, particularly up front. So it'll be a tough defense that FSU has to go against today. We're looking for another heart stopper here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Florida State and Auburn. We'll be back to continue with Football Saturday from our studios in Atlanta right after this. Working together, making life better. Taking the keys and we're on our way. Skylar. If ever stops, there's always something to do. Morning to night, each and every day. Skylar. One of these days we gotta take a vacation. But until then, we got places to be. Skylark. The new Buick Skylark. A little sedan and a lot of Buick. Skylark. 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 Four-cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever, even when they're just idling. But watch this.
even after 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. Super Football Saturday continues in studio with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. Auburn and Florida State. Last year they combined for 83 points. And with Bo Jackson, the passing attack of Florida State, I'm looking forward to this one. I think they pretty well covered it at the top of the show. You're not going to stop Bo Jackson, but if you can hold him under 150 yards, you've done a good job. Tennessee held him for under 100 yards, but of course they knocked him out of the ball game. Yeah, uh, Bo Jackson did not want to leave that ball game, but his knee, he said he had trouble with injuries last year and he wasn't going to repeat last year's performances. He took care of himself. But what they've got to do is just that. They've got to stop Danny McManus, the quarterback, the sophomore quarterback of Florida to stay. In addition to that, Bobby Bowden just airs the ball. It doesn't matter which quarterback he uses, really. He plays X's and O's offense, which means that if you're a receiver, you catch the ball, and you see Hassan Jones doing it right here. Almost anybody in his offense can come in and contribute. We saw Hassan Jones get hurt in the opening game we had televised against Tulane. I'm glad to see he's back at full strength. He's an exciting player to watch. And they've got so much depth at any position, and that get, should give them a slight edge over Auburn because Auburn's got great depth, too, but not like Florida State. I'm going to show you a great pass play right now. The ball game, North Carolina State against Pittsburgh opening possession, third play of the game. North Carolina State, of course, the underdog. Watch this one. Eric Kramer to Phil Brothers, who beats the secondary, then outruns them. A 90-yard touchdown pass. And NC State is on top of Pittsburgh, 7-0. Other scores, Virginia Tech leads William & Mary by the same score. And a field goal by Clemson leading Virginia 3-0. And this is be the first time, if Virginia wins today, be the first time they've ever beaten Clemson. And uh, Clemson, of course, has not been off to a good start this year at Death Valley. Other good games today, Oklahoma State, Nebraska. Uh, Pat Jones has his job cut out for him. He hasn't beaten Nebraska since 1961, or not he, but the entire school has never won since 1961, and that's his job is to erase this mental block that they have. Alabama, Penn State. Alabama, Bray Perkins may just have re uh, matured as a coach over there. We'll find out today because he's going to be tested by Joe Paterno. DJ Do Dozier is back, and he's a fine runner for Penn State. Big Ten rivalries, Michigan, Michigan State, Northwestern, Minnesota. Michigan State. For the, uh, has Lorenzo White, number four rusher in the country, but Michigan has Jim Harbaugh, and they also a quarterback, and I can't remember when I saw a Michigan team that could throw as well as he does. In addition to that, they've got a top defense. And Northwestern's trying to win a homecoming. And who would know more about that than you? Well, of course, scores and highlights throughout the game. We'll have a uh, first half coming up with Bob Neal and Tim Foley in just a moment. The Florida State University Seminoles, they are 4-0. and oh. They defeated Nebraska on the road. They are known as the kings of the road, but they've never won here because of the Auburn Tigers. They are 3-1. and one. They suffered a 38-20 loss at Tennessee. Rebounded and rebound they did last week with a 41-0 whipping here at Jordan-Hare of Ole Miss. And there comes Pat Dye, fifth year at Auburn. He was at East Carolina, then Wyoming. He is 91-38-1 since coming here. Florida State and Auburn, the Seminoles and the Tigers, and what was a heart stopper last year. We'll be back with a coin toss and the kickoff right after this. This is Turner Network Television. The captain's in the middle of the field now with the officials in today's game. The man in the white hat is the referee. His name is Bill Goff. Let's join them for the pregame conversation. Uh, as you'll see the coin toss, the mic is not working, we understand, so we'll just watch and find out what happens as you do. Auburn has won the talk. Remember that the teams have an option here as to whether or not to take the option to make a decision on kicking off or receiving. Normally, and what has happened almost all year, and even last year, is the team that wins the toss takes the option for the second half. I think that's what's happened here. Here is Auburn. They won the toss. They are going to receive. That's the first time we've seen it, as soon as I told you that. Auburn has elected to exercise their option here in the first half, will receive, and the Auburn University Tigers will be on offense to begin this game. They are number two in the nation, right behind Nebraska in total offense. The man who'll pull the trigger today, number 10, Pat Washington, and it has been really a quarterback merry-go-round for Auburn this year. They started the first game that you saw here on TNT with Bobby Walden at quarterback, then came in with Jeff Berger to start a couple of games. Now Pat Washington is the man. There you see the comparison of the statistics 
of the three people who have played quarterback for Auburn so far this year. Pat Washington now with the starting job, and we might say this is Pat Washington's 22nd birthday today. So happy birthday to Pat Washington. Let's see if that will motivate that young man. We mentioned Florida State's quarterback situation. Florida State also has a group of quarterbacks. As you look at Barry Barco, number seven, the kickoff kicker for Florida State and the Seminoles, McManus will start, but we could see Eric Thomas. We could see Chip Ferguson. We even could see Kirk Coker. Of course, what Bobby Bowden is hoping for is that McManus will be successful and go all the way. Date back to receive. Number 22 for Auburn is Brent Fullwood. He is playing with a sore knee today. He stands in the middle of the field. I really didn't think we'd see Fullwood today, Bob. Uh, didn't play at all last week against uh, Mississippi and has not practiced all this week. But you can tell the adrenaline flowing I think is flowing. I think anyone that's close to being ready to play is going to be on the field today. Over on the right wing, you saw number 20, Shan Morris. Here's the kickoff. Marco hits it deep into the end zone. Fullwood wisely elects not to return the ball. And the Auburn Tigers will go on offense. First down 10 from their own 20-yard line as Pat Washington goes onto the field for the Auburn Tigers. In the backfield, the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. 815 yards rushing on the year. Net rushing yardage, Bo Jackson. Tommy Agee, the great blocker at fullback. Wagand and Gaines are the wideouts and the H-back playing in the tight end position. Number 87, Ron Middleton. We'll talk about that tight end H-back situation as we go. Wallace Lott, Tamborello, Howard Cyril, the offensive line, and Jeff Parks, the tight end, number 82. He alternates with the H-back. On the first down, it's Bo Jackson. Seven yards to the 27. Let's look at the Seminole defense, and you can see what their job is going to be today, and that is to stop Bo Jackson. The down linemen, Williams, Stroud, and Nichols, Isaac Williams, perhaps the best athlete of that group. The linebackers are excellent. Fred Jones and McGowan, the heart and soul in the middle. Warren and Jacks on the outside. Warren starting in place of Daryl Gray today. In the backfield, Shiver and Newell make most of the tackles, and Mayhew and Eric Williams will start at the corners. We'll also see freshman Deion Sanders in. It is second down three for the Cardinals. And they hand off to the fullback, A.G., who does not get the first down. He gets about a yard and is stopped at the 28-yard line by number 71, nose guard Todd Stroud. Bob Auburn started first play with an unbalanced line into the sideline. They also, instead of lining up Middleton, the H-back, to the opposite side, away from the tight end, he lined up on the tight end side. There are only two man, men to the left of the football, ran it into the sideline. So look for a little bit more unbalanced line from this Auburn football team. Third down two. Auburn, opening series of the game. Here it is again, Bob, unbalanced line. Pitch, Bo Jackson. Gets the first down by about a yard, running off the left side behind Steve Wallace. He was stripped up by the left side quarterback, Martin Mayhew, number 32. Penalty marker on the field. Let's watch that line again. Watch that line work. So A.G. leading the way. Jackson dives for the first down. Yan Cowart, number 53, hustling to get downfield. It's a first down. Bill Goss, the referee, who we understand is not wearing a microphone today, so we won't hear him, but that was a personal foul against Florida State, a very big penalty because it is tacked on 15 yards after the foul and is moved to the 48-yard line. Good ball. Personal foul defense, 15 yards, for first down. Well, there you go. <laughs> he doesn't need a microphone. He's good, isn't he? What a voice, huh? He's doing that without a microphone. Nice work, Bill. Referee Bill Goss, who, as you can see, is, in fact, wearing a microphone. And now we have that settled. First down 10. Tigers from the 48-yard line of Auburn. Aided by the 15-yard personal foul penalty. Washington's first pass from Short Hopper. He's looking out for 14, Freddie Wagand. Pat Washington has an excellent arm, but he certainly didn't get that one underway very well. It goes over one. It'll be second down 10. It's the second first down situation they've had. They're now 50% on first down. One run, one pass. Wagan was open. He had Eric Williams turn. Washington just needs to deliver the ball on time. Second down 10 from the 48-yard line. Parks and Lee Mark Sellers in at the double tight end positions now. No H back in the game on this play for Auburn. Out of the eye. Bo Jackson. Hit behind the line, breaks tackle, three tackle. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn.
53 yards on that run for Bo Jackson. He has 64 on the day. Into the point after number two, Chris Johnson. And with less than two minutes gone in the ball game, Auburn draws first blood. Point after is good. That was Bo Jackson's 35th career TD, tying him with Joe Cribb for the best in Auburn history. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. You know you can do the job. All you need is a chance. Look what the Air Force Reserve can offer. Good pay and benefits. Technical training in a variety of fields. And more education with the new Reserve GI Bill and the Community College of the Air Force. All for two weeks a year and one weekend a month. Today's Air Force Reserve. A great way to serve. October, get a master mechanic drill bit set with selector case for just $8.88. Look for the True Value of the Month banner at participating True Value hardware stores. We got what it takes, True Value. Here's the 53 yard touchdown run again. You saw Middleton just clear your screen to the right. He's double teaming with Parks up on top. Good block by Wallace and AG, and now the rest is Bo Jackson. Defensive back coming over here. Mayhew, what you have to think is grab a piece of the jersey. You're not going to get him on the ground. Slow him up long enough so you can get some help. When Jackson's in the open field, though, he's got the power to run over you, the quickness to avoid you. It's a tough play. Bo Jackson has now scored nine touchdowns on the season. And he's also, you didn't know this, but he's also a scholarship cheerleader. <laughs> Working while the defense is out there, the special teams. 20 Ross, 44 Wells are back. In the back of the end zone, Florida State won't run it out. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Scoring drive, 80 yards, five plays. The 53-yard TD run by Jackson, the obvious key play on the drive, aided by a 15-yard personal foul penalty on the prior play against two plays prior to that against Florida State. So here come the Seminoles now. They will be led by number 14, Danny McManus, a sophomore who has played very well, but in the two games we've seen of Florida State has had a rough time physically. He is 6'1", 185. He's had two concussions this year. Tony Smith and Cletus Jones start in the backfield. 49, Smith the tailback. 42, Jones the fullback. First down 10 from the 20. Seminoles undefeated on the year. So reverse, Hassan Jones has it wide. No, he's going to throw. It's incomplete. He was looking for number 24, Darren Holloman. Hassan Jones had it wide open for a long run, but obviously the play call was a receiver pass option, and Hassan Jones threw it. The receiver, intended receiver, Holloman, covered very well. There you see the backfield. We talked about all of them. The offensive line for Florida State, very good. Ayanata and Dukes, very strong. Pat Tomberlin, 320 pounds, the right guard. He is a freshman. Lopez playing well also, and Pat Carter, a very good blocker at tight end. Pete Patton will trade off with Pat Carter. Pete Patton in the game right now. He wears number 96. Second down, 10. Seminoles. McMahon. Tony Smith has some running room. To the 50-yard line. Tony Smith on the right side screen. 74 rocker with the tackle. 30 yards. This is something you've not seen much from Florida State this year. They, they've used a quick screen package, but not a slow developing screen like this. Auburn blitzing inside. Smith makes the catch. Now it's just running clean. Good hustle by the downfield receivers like Jamie Dukes hustling to get into this picture. We've got another barn burner on our hands, Bob. This is going to be one of those one just like the last two years. Last year, 42-41 Auburn was the score. There were 52 first downs and over 1,000 yards in offense on the first down. McManus it's complete for another first down to the 37-yard line. Pete Patton is tackled. 
And the Auburn defense is going to have to stop the passing game of Florida State. That was a 12-yard run. Three down linemen are Rocker, Hallman, and Williams. Robinson and Thomas key men on the outside, particular Robinson. He's a good pass rusher. Powell and Johnson are the safeties. Porter and Warren, there are the linebackers, McCurdy and Corrin. And we understand that Edward Phillips will be playing a lot. Johnson and Powell are the safeties. And it is Tom Powell who is down on the field, the injured player for the Auburn Tigers. Number nine. Tommy Powell, you see Tommy lying on the ground there. They're looking at his thigh. Uh, he's set the third, tied for third in the nation with interceptions for interceptions with four, total of four, and he's really the quarterback of that secondary. They were going to do a couple things a little bit differently in this game, and I think they need Tommy Powell playing in order to pull off any changes. See if we can see the play that resulted in his injury. There he is making the tackle on Panton, number nine. Difficult to see what happened. Good form tackle. He looks like he's okay right now. Already there's been 100 yards of total offense in this game. So, it is first down, Florida State. Looks like Powell's okay. We'll keep a close eye on that young man as we go along. First down, 10, Florida State at the 36-yard line of Auburn. Auburn has already scored on a 53-yard Bo Jackson run. Picked off number 41, Pat Thomas. The defensive right end, really an outside linebacker. Almost picked it off. A senior from Mobile, but almost didn't count. It'll be second down. Just a quick pass trying to suck the linebackers in. Almost an option type of play, Bob. I think probably the read is read the weak linebacker. If the weak linebacker is taking away that slant pattern, then go ahead and pitch it back to the tailback, who is right now flaring out to the right. The Hassan Jones was open on that play. Also, Powell, number nine, free safety back in for Auburn. It is second down, 10 Seminole. Pullman in motion. McManus. Plenty of time. Look at the coverage. McManus thrown for a loss. Number 99 with a tackle, Nate Hill. That's his second tackle of the day. Loses two, uh, two about two yards on that play also. Check that, he gets a two-yard gain on the play. There's the Tigers, as we've told you. They lead the league in total defense. Just an awesome performance last week against Mississippi. Mississippi had first downs, and their two first downs, their first three plays, and after that, it was minus yardage. Third down eight from the 34-yard line. Tony Smith, first down. To the 19-yard line, Tom Powell with the tackle. Gain of 16 yards by Tony Smith, the Florida State tailback. There's one of your great game coaches, Bobby Bowden. I think he, he would probably enjoy coaching without a game plan <laughs> sometimes. And he'll call a lot of things on the run. He works a lot from feel, and if he thinks it's time for something, he'll throw it in there. He'll interrupt the, the play flow of, of Wayne McDuffie, the offensive coordinator, and pump in something that he might like at that particular time. Seminoles knocking on the door, trailing 7-0, 11.06 to go, quarter number one. McManus. Holloman. Nice cut. And he drives to the nine-yard line. Close to a first down as you watch this Holloman catch. Remember, he is so little, he's 5'7". They tell the officials, don't call him down until you see his knee. Runs with three legs, meaning one more arm. Often today, you'll see him in possession of the football go down just like he did there and regain his balance. He has got the quickest feet that I've seen all year long, and he was, he'd really be difficult to cover in a one-on-one -on -one situation this close in. Florida State Seminoles with a second down one at the nine yard line. It's actually about a foot to go. And I think there's a confusion about the, the substitutions here. A couple of men came in, a couple went out. They looked confused on the sideline. McManus checked it over, intelligently called a timeout, goes to the sideline. We'll be back in a moment to Jordan Hare Stadium. 10 20 to go, quarter number one. Auburn leads 7 0. Not so very long ago, the average four-cylinder engine looked something like this. But these days, four-cylinder engines look a little more like this. That's why we developed new Valvoline four-guard motor oil. 
specially formulated to protect today's harder working, more complex four-cylinder engines. And it won't break down, even after 7,500 miles. Times have definitely changed. So maybe it's time to change your oil to new Valvoline Foreguard. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't love your work and leave it to you? Who says you can't taste it all without it telling all? Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. So the Florida State Seminoles have an offense, too. Everybody's known that. Last year in losing, they even outgained Auburn. Here they have driven from their 20 to the nine-yard line of Auburn. It is second down one. Double tight ends are Carter and White. Fullback Cletus Jones, penalty marker down. Jones got the first down. Flag on the play. Gerald Williams, 98 with the tackle for Auburn. Williams and Thomas make the stop for Auburn. May it be against Auburn. Offsides, Offsides Tigers. Bob, last week Auburn's defense was terrifically aggressive. They just dominated Mississippi. And I think what ha what's happening here is Bowden's trying to slow down that momentum a little bit. He's taking the ball to the air and slowing down that defensive charge. He's going to get him thinking a little bit more about pass rush, about screen draw. And in that way, I think he's setting him up to run the ball a little bit later in the game. That's the call offsides against Auburn. They, of course, take the penalty. It gives them the first down and more yardage. Inside the five to the four, first and goal. First and goal for Florida State. Inside the Auburn five. 10-13 to go. Quarter number one. Auburn leads 7-0 on a 53-yard Bo Jackson touchdown run. Seminoles come firing back. Tony Smith, reverse. Holloman. And it's wide open. Touchdown, Florida State. Gotta love the play calling of Bobby Bowden and his coaches. I'm sure Wayne McDuffie and he spend a lot of time talking these things over. This is a risky call for a coach because if it doesn't work, you, re you really can look silly. The nice thing ab about Bowden, I think, especially when he's on the road, he's going to take chances and he knows that he's got to score touchdowns, got to take advantage of every scoring opportunity he has against this Auburn football team. Eric Smith for the point after attempt. We have a tie ball game. Five minutes and six seconds have elapsed in this game. Both teams have scored 7-7. We got another barn burner on our hands at Jordan Hare Stadium. This is Turner Network Television. Delta singers representing over 38,000 pros worldwide are singing out a new message. Four-cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever, even when they're just idling. But watch this. 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. So the Seminoles have tied this game at 7-7, fourth ranked in the country. Auburn ranked 12th. Last year it was 42-41, and Tim already, they're just piling up stats. Five first downs for Florida State, five first down opportunities, three passes, and two reverses. And, and that's not what I call conservative play call. And how about you, Bob? And no kickoff returns. That one goes into the end zone again. Brent Fullwood just touches it down, and here comes Auburn again as they'll set it up first down 10 at their own 20, and that's where we started when the game began. 
Well, Pat Dye just spent the last three minutes circling the wagons down there with his defense, and he was trying to get a little bit of excitement, a little bit of emotion into them. I think at this point what they need is, is some poise. It's, uh, because this game is not all emotion, it's not all aggressive, it's not all upfield. You got to think sometimes. Two 80-yard drives. Both teams started at their 20 and clickety click down the field. First down, 10 Tigers. Here comes Bo Jackson. Penalty markers down. Jackson gets about three. Penalty marker was thrown at the line of scrimmage from the defensive backfield. Fred Jones, 55, with a tackle. Bill Goss calls holding against Auburn. I might, I might admit that mention that Florida State and Auburn have just signed a new agreement to continue this series that's developed of recent years into a fiery series. Uh, Florida State will be replacing Georgia Tech on the Auburn schedule for many years into the future after next year. And it is a beautiful and natural rivalry. Handling offense, 10 yards, well, first down. Auburn is not a poor as football team as the Tennessee score would seem to indicate. Uh, they hurt themselves a lot earlier in the game by leaving the ball on the ground, fumbling the ball, but when they went right at Tennessee, they were successful. And I think that's what they're going to try to do today, today, mixing in a few play passes. First down 20 from the 10, Auburn. Washington perhaps with an audible. Jackson runs left. They got him out there this time, loses three. Leading tackler, 55, Fred Jones. Right in front of the Seminole cheering section, I might add. There are 10,000 Florida State fans here, 62,000 Tiger fans. Good check off here by Pat Washington. Jackson has a little trouble getting started. Searles is pulling the other way, along with Cowart leading the way, but he tries to overextend and kind of trips, giving Jones time to get underneath and make the play. That's what you want to do with the great back, though. Get him running laterally. Keep him from turning upfield. Good hustle by Florida State's defense. Second down, 22, Auburn. Jackson again, right up the middle. Hit behind the line and stopped at the nine-yard line. You see 17 came away with the ball, Eric Williams, but it was after the whistle had sounded. And we will have third down, 21 for Auburn. In a game like this, a running back earns the headlines in the papers. You're not going to see many out in the open 60-yard dashes in a game like this, I don't feel. Most of the running is going to be tough up inside, four and five yards. And you're going to take several shots each time you touch the football. For most teams, an obvious passing situation, but Auburn's inside their 10, and Auburn has Bo Jackson. Let's see what Washington does. Gives it to number 30, fullback Tommy Agee. He's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. This Seminole defensive unit fired up after holding Auburn. You might, however, blame or credit Auburn with the biggest defensive play, and that was the holding call. Watch this hole open and close here. You see Jeff Lott, number 66, trying to drive out Todd. Stroud can't do it. Tries to pop back to the outside and careful, Stanley. Shiver, you get called for spearing in that situation. Seminoles will go after the punt. Lewis Colbert's one of the best in the country at punting, however. Here they come. He gets it away. Deion Sanders back to take the punt, but it goes out of bounds. Up near midfield. It was a beautiful punt off the foot of Lewis Colbert. Of 43 yards out of his end zone under intense pressure. Colbert averaging 48.2 yards per punt coming into this game, but did not punt at all last week, and thus may not be listed among the nation's leaders as he's had only 16 so far this year. So Florida State gets it at their own 48 with excellent field position, tied 7-7, 7-14 to go, quarter number one. Auburn is nicked up front. Hill and Hallman uh, all, all have little na nagging problems that are limiting their mobility. Same with Robinson. You can expect Andre Bruce to get a lot of play for Gerald Robinson today. In the backfield, 42 Jones at fullback, 49 Smith the tailback. This is Tony Smith. Big hole. To the 40-yard line, first down, and inside the 40. 42 Gary Kelly sophomore from Birmingham making the stop Gary Kelly listed as the third team outside linebacker mentioning Tim about the Knicks ups we'll see some substitutes and quite a few for Auburn defensively 
This is the healthiest Florida State has been all year. They've been damaged and players hurt ever since they came to camp in the fall. But right now, everyone is healthy, with the exception of Sammy Smith, who's uh, got a bad ankle, but he wouldn't have been a big factor today. Tony Smith, right side. Hit behind the line, excellent tackle. Number 94, Harold Hallman, right up the middle. Excellent penetration. That's the way you stop the good backs, and that's pick them off with penetration while they're going east and west and before north and south. They've shown three different reverse looks. Hassan, Hassan Jones threw the first one. That could have been a run for 20 yards. That last one, they faked the reverse, and the reverse looked like it was there. Auburn needs to talk over their containment when the flow goes away. Second down, 13 Auburn. Victor Floyd in at tailback now. He's number 27. McManus going upstairs. Looking deep. Incomplete at the three-yard line. He was trying to find Hassan Jones. Excellent coverage by number three, Kevin Porter. Hassan Jones, a preseason All-American candidate, was injured in the first game against Tulane, missed a couple, is still playing off a shoulder injury. A little fake toss, just trying to get that cornerback to take a few steps to the inside, but Porter is really playing disciplined football back at his cornerback position. They didn't fake him out on the reverse pass, and they, he stuck right with Hassan Jones there. He knows his job is to shut off number 88, and that's he's got his hands full. Third down, 13 Seminoles. Number 20, Keith Ross just into the game. He's a freshman. First down. What a run by Keith Ross after catching the right side screen. Ross, a youngster from Newberry, Florida, a pure freshman. 14 yards on the play. He took a lot of punishment after the reception. Fine, fine run here by Keith Ross. Third and 13, you're almost looking for a draw or a screen. They come with the screen. Auburn hustling to try to get into the flow of the play, but uh, Lyman out front did a nice job, and then watch Ross struggle. He did not make it, and he wouldn't have made it if he hadn't struggled past that third hit. At the 29-yard line of Auburn, hand off to the fullback, Cletus Jones, inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. And you're going to see the results of a great recruiting year for Florida State today with Victor Floyd and Keith Ross and so many of the freshmen. When Florida went on probation, Florida State got a lot of the good Florida athletes. And Auburn and Florida State had perhaps two of the best five recruiting years in the nation last year. Pat Dye on the sideline obviously concerned about Florida State's ability to move the ball on his defense early in the game. Second down, six. Exactly at the 25-yard line of Auburn. Tie game, 7-7. Seven, seven. Closing moments, first quarter. It's complete to Darren Holloman for a first down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. And Danny McManus rifled that little short out pattern for the first down. He's a tough little fellow to hook up with man-to-man. -man. I mean, his feet are moving all the time like he was standing in an ant pile. He's just uh, always hustling, and he's difficult. He's got such great quickness to cover man-to-man. -man. If What they have to do is they have to get him some help out there, at least the perception of some help, Bob. Line a linebacker out there and then bring him back in. First and 10, Seminoles at the 17. Here's Tony Smith. Nothing going. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Number 52, Ben McCurdy, one of the tacklers on the play. Initial tackle made by number 98, Gerald Williams, and he's perhaps the best athlete on the defensive line. Let's watch the senior from Valley, Alabama. Nice job. He tries to close the hole from the outside, gets knocked off his feet, but continues to scrap and crawl, gets there to make the play. Good hustle, Gerald. Grew up just 15 miles from here. 42 Jones out and 44 Wells in at fullback for the Seminoles on second down 10. Pressure. Green. Catch by Wells. To the 10-yard line. Two yards shy of the first down goes Chuck Wells, the sophomore from Jacksonville. 45 Warren, number 9 Powell with the tackle. This is more classic Florida State offense. The quick screen, Bob. Weak side of the formation to the wide side of the field. You run the split end on a slant. If the linebacker doesn't get in and shut it off, dump it right now to the fullback. Good play by Jimmy Warren hanging on there. Or Wells could have gone in. Very big conversion play for both sides. Third down two at the 10 of Auburn. Tie game 7-7. McManus on the option. Tony Smith. First down. 
by about a yard, number three, Porter, with the tackle. There's that varied Florida State offense. McManus on the option play that time to tailback Tony Smith, who's having himself a good game. He has 26 yards and five carries. They're going to measure for this one. If he makes it, it was a great effort by Smith, but Pat Carter fought his way through and really stuck with the man he was blocking there to give Smith the room to get that first down. Oh, it is so very close. Watch this. If we can get him to move his foot, what do you call it? It's first down. Oh. The game of inches? Centimeters in this case. Now there's the Florida State Seminole mascot you just saw. A lot of people think that's our director, Chuck Fouts, but it is the Seminole mascot. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck Fouts, did I say? That's okay. Well, there's the if last. You're gonna, if you're going to offend him, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> of course, Ken Fouts, our director. There's my last time to be on camera. First down and goal from the eighth for Florida State. It's a reverse. It's a fake reverse. Victor Floyd, but Auburn has been going to school, and they stopped the fake reverse. And Victor Floyd goes down at the line of scrimmage. Number nine, Tom Powell from Greenville, Alabama with the tackle. At that time, Tommy Powell lined up in a bump and run position against Darren Holloman, a wide receiver. Tommy Howell is usually Powell, excuse me, is usually a free safety. Warren coming back into the football game. Powell coming out. Actually a loss of yardage on the play. They move it back about a half a yard. Now it's Tony Smith and Keith Ross in the backfield. Ross incomplete. Good pressure by Auburn. 2.34 to go, first quarter, and there's the freshman, Keith Ross. It's tied at seven. Seminoles knocking on the door again. If you're FSU in this situation, what you want to do is you want to isolate Holloman and, and Hassan Jones and just let them work man-to-man. -man. Pick a side and let them take on the cornerbacks man-to-man. -man. Florida State, three out of three on third down conversions. Oh, my, this is a big one. Third and goal from the eighth. Let's watch him. McManus with a bobbled snap from center Dave Schrinker. You know what they had on, Bob? Quick screen to the flanker. Watch those linemen scooting out of your picture right away. See him going? It's a quick screen to the flanker. Jones was backing up. They were going to try to pop him out there and let him sift his way, let him sift his way through the defenders, but got to get the ball from the center first. One of the best kickers in the country, number 18 sophomore Derek Schmidt, Kirk Coker holds. 28-yard attempt. Is no good. It is no good. The game remains tied. We'll be back to Jordan Hare right after this. cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever, even when they're just idling. But watch this. Even after 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. the discerning people who buy Buicks more by Century than any other. Century. You know that you belong, yeah. Century. Keeps rolling right along, yeah. Head into the future in this century. The Buick Century. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Schmidt had been perfect from this distance. Let's see what went awry. This is what you call a shank. He knew it. From the moment he hit it, he knew it. Remember we talked about Bob running reverses down in close and sometimes it can backfire on you? That's kind of what happened that on that particular series of plays. Florida State lost a play, really, with that reverse. Bobby Bowden may have gone to that reverse well once too often. As you said, Tim, if it works, he's a hero, and if it doesn't, guys like you and I can say, maybe he went to the will once too often. On first down, Auburn 
Pat Washington under pressure dumps it out incomplete. It'll be second down 10. And look at that one. A good one happening at Gainesville, Tennessee, and Florida tied in the second quarter. We'll be seeing Tennessee, Alabama on many of these TNT stations next week in Birmingham. Florida State defensively, Mickey Andrews chose a safety blitz. They're in man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, even bump and run down here. Look at that. Eight first downs for Florida State, but now this is only the second time Auburn's had a chance to really run at it the third time, so those stats will definitely go up on a second and ten. Now Bo Jackson hit at the line of scrimmage. Bo Jackson on his third run from the line of scrimmage ripped off 53 yards for a touchdown since then has been bottled up. Let's go to Atlanta for a college football update from our studios. Thank you, Bob. It was North Carolina State 10 to nothing over Pittsburgh when John Jimmy throws the option pitch to Charles Gladman. He sweeps left for the score. The point after was good. Pittsburgh nears it to North Carolina State 10, Pittsburgh 7. Back to you, Bob. By the way, Alec Hawkins, Don Shula was talking to Tim Foley last week and had a compliment, did he not? Right, he said that he couldn't believe, he couldn't believe how distinguished you look, Hawk. Alec, a former player of Don Shula's in Baltimore, Pat Washington. It's picked off! Number 17, Eric Williams! Touchdown, Florida State! Return intended for 82 Jeff Park. Williams picks it off and takes it into Pater. His second interception of the year. And Auburn's turnover problems continue to plague them. They are last in the league in turnovers. One after is good. We're going to see this in a moment. Pat Washington sets up. Primary receiver was covered, went to a secondary receiver now. You can see it. Good pass rush by Shavers. Work around the outside. Nichols up the middle. And here comes the ball. Nice reaction on the ball by Eric Williams, who made a big interception in the Kansas game as it wound down to preserve a victory. Williams comes up with another big play for the defense. And FSU extends its lead. Sophomore Eric Williams from Safety Harbor, Florida. He is certainly not a safe harbor for opposing quarterbacks. That's rough water out there. Pat Dye wondering what he can do about the turnovers. Plenty of time in a football game. 14 to 7 in, <laughs> traditionally in this game. Uh, we'll hold up for a couple of minutes, maybe. A 30-point lead might be safe in this game, but uh, last year, Auburn had a 16-point lead and saw it melt away before they held on for the 42-41 tie, 42-41 uh, victory. 109 to go, quarter number one. That's the, uh, I'm just adding these up, Tim Foley, that is the... 10th interception on the year in only four games and one quarter thrown by the three Auburn quarterbacks. It's amazing when we first talked to uh, Mickey Andrews and Bobby Bowden about their defense, uh, when you mentioned the secondary, they broke out in hives. They were so nervous because they didn't have anybody that ever played there before. And uh, Martin, Martin Mayhew has really come on. Deanne Sanders, a strong backup. And uh, of course, Eric Williams played last year, has played well. Fullwood's going to return this one, number 22, on the right side. To the 20-yard line goes Brent Fullwood, where Auburn now trailing in the game, 14-7. Funny game, football. Auburn puts together a very good drive, stalls at the 10, at the 11, misses a 28-yard field goal attempt, uh, Florida State, I should say. Then they come right back and get the touchdown, where you at least expect it on an interception. And there's a young man under pressure. Three quarterbacks here at Auburn, Washington, Berger, Walden, all have started during the year. Washington tabbed to start the last two games, and now he's thrown his fourth interception of the season. I, would, I wouldn't say that was his fault, though, Bob. That was an excellent play by Eric Williams. Penalty marker on the field. Confusion in the Auburn offense. Uh, it seems as though Reggie Ware was going to replace Tommy Agee on that series, and he wasn't in the football game. He only had 10 men on the field. Florida State almost had a problem with that previously and called timeout. McManus called timeout at this spot, but Washington didn't know. Jack? Joe Jackson says, Wait, give me some help back here. <laughs> 
that's unfortunate. It's only 14 to 7. Uh, there's been a lot happening here, though, in the first quarter, and, and you could feel a lot farther behind than 14 to 7. The idea here now is to just relax. We moved the ball, and the first time we had it, we moved the ball right down the field and scored. Let's just go back to our game plan, folks. No big deal. Our defense will get their act together. They'll be able to shut down Florida State. Let's score some points. You see Pat Washington talking to the coaches on the sideline. He is 0 for 3 today. Bo Jackson just moved up in the Auburn career rushing stats. Pass Joe Cribs to number two behind James Brooks. You oh, what running backs they've had here. Two great coaches going after each other today. Bobby Bowden is 11 of the winningest active coaches list. And Pat Dye is number 13. So they're both fine coaches. Dye has uh, got an accelerated success program going here at Auburn since he arrived in 1981. Bo Jackson on the first down. About eight yards, Bo Jackson on student body left. Bo Jackson with 69 yards on the day now. It was McGowan and Nichols, 38 McGowan, the real star linebacker for Florida State, and he'll be looking after number 34 all day long. Nice play by Alfonso Williams. He strung the play out, permitted Jackson from turning it upfield. In the corner is what you've got to protect with a guy like Jackson. If he gets there and turns up, now you've got big, big trouble. They're giving Jackson seven yards on the previous play. It'll be second down three with 23 seconds to go the first quarter. Hand off to the fullback. And number 36, Reggie Ware, gets the first down to the 31. They stop the clock there with 16 seconds to go in quarter number one. The fullback position has really been overlooked as an offensive weapon on this Auburn team, but gee whiz, A.G. has averaged uh, over five yards a carry, and Reggie Ware, he's a kind of a running mountain. He's 6'3", 245 pounds. They say he runs a 4'6", and I wouldn't volunteer to get in his way. <laughs> I don't know about you. Auburn has the guns. They have the weapons. The idea is to get them pointed at the enemy. And that's the end of the first quarter. Bo Jackson finishes the first quarter with 68 yards and 153-yard touchdown run, but Florida State leads 14-7. This is Turner Network Television. That's great. When I needed a new chainsaw, I went right to a Poulin dealer. That's Poland. Feature for feature, dollar for dollar, it's hard to beat a Poulin. Poland. And a Poulin dealer can help you pick just the right saw for the job. Seems a saw this good deserves a dealer this good. So, when you're looking for a tough, dependable chainsaw, look for a dealer that sells Poland. Poland. That's what I said, Poland. You said Poland? Ask them. Poland. America's chainsaw. For the average renter, the five-door Mercury Lynx has plenty of room. And it's only $29.95 a day. A budget. But budget has another car. One that's more my style. The Lincoln Town Car. Look at this headroom. And even us big shots like budget small price. Only $39.95 a day. Get the economy of luxury. Or the luxury of economy. Go to budget and say, the car, or the car. Today's game is brought to you in part by Buick and your local Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. You know, I'm glad you got back here, Bob. I was a little bit worried about it. My friend here just was learning how to speak Russian this week. He was over getting ready to do some work over there. In Moscow, the Soviet Union, for a week as we prepare for the Goodwill telecast on many of these TNT stations next summer. It is good to be at Auburn, Alabama this Saturday afternoon. Bo Jackson, flag on the play. Jackson down at the 34. First play of the second quarter, Florida State leading 14 to seven. This is Bob Neal with Tim Foley. As you look at our first quarter statistics, and it's been mostly FSU after that first drive by Auburn with the 53 yard run by Jackson. And Tim, if you take away the Jackson run, penalties offside Seminoles, take away the Jackson run for the touchdown, and FSU has really stuffed Auburn thus far. They've done a nice job, but the, the next Auburn hasn't had the ball that much really the next series they started off with a holding penalty which put them in the hole they were deep in their own territory they couldn't try anything fancy the idea is just punt it and hold FSU defense lined up offside five yards still first down 
You heard the explanation there. Excuse me, referee Bill Goss. During the game, we're going to show you this Auburn unbalanced line. That time they lined up in it against. Again, both tight ends to the wide side of the field. And uh, Cyril's was the last man on the line of scrimmage. First down five from the 36-yard line of Auburn, trailing 14-7. Jackson to the 39-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Jesse Solomon, number 57, from the linebacker position, a senior from Madison, Florida, with the stop for the Seminoles. And I think that's what Jack Crow would like to do on every play. Just run Jackson up in there. Run Ware up in there and A.G. up in there and Fullward and Stewart. And they've got a lot of horses in their stable. And just control the football. You keep Florida State's offense off the field. Eight carries in this game for Bo Jackson. They wondered how many times he could carry out of the eye. He said as many times as you want. 50 a game, fine. Had 108 coming into the game. There he was hit by 57 again. Jesse Solomon still struggled forward. But he's going to not get much of a gain on the play, if any. They spot it inside the 40. It will be third down and about one for Auburn. What's that line strike out there? You see Terry Warren. He's getting his second start. Started against uh, Kansas last week. And Jesse Solomon penetrating through the gap, making contact beyond the line of scrimmage. He's a senior from Madison, Florida. 240-pound linebacker. He's low. Now it's A.G. Ware and Jackson, third down one. This is power football. Jackson stopped. He dived forward. They put the ball just inches outside the 40-yard line, but it will be shy of the first down. And 57, Jesse Solomon with three tackles in a row. They put that 240-pound man mountain in there and said, look up number 34. I think that you can afford to be a lot more on aggressive on defense when you've got corners like Mayhew and Williams and Sanders. They're good man-to-man -man coverage people. They don't need that undercover help from a linebacker like some other corners do, and that lets Mickey Andrews turn his team loose a little bit more. Auburn's going to go for it. Fourth down, one yard. Penalty markers everywhere. Confusion at the line of scrimmage. We saw this before. It was merely a shift by Auburn, uh, just a ploy to try to draw Florida State offside. And it worked. Here's Bill Goss, illegal procedure, Florida State. And the trick worked, Tim. But the quarterback probably, he gets under there and he just says, cut. And instead of running a play, they shift. And you have to be an awful disciplined defensive lineman not to move when you see feet moving on the Later other side of the line. The defense, contact before the snap as a first down. We saw Alabama do the same thing against Vanderbilt. It didn't work for them, but it certainly worked for Auburn. They, it may have appeared as though they were in motion. They were simply shifting to another set. First down, 10 Auburn from the 45. Here's Brent Fullwood. He's wide open to the 31-yard line. Greg Newell with a tackle. Jackson out. Fullwood is playing on a sore knees in there. And Fullwood averages nearly nine yards a carry. He can scat it. That's a 25-yard romp right there. I'm not sure the Florida State coaches like to see Jackson out of the football game. I think they're just as afraid of Brent Fullwood as they are of Bo Jackson. When you talk to Jim Gladden and Mickey Andrews, they really respect that young man's ability and his intensity. Came into the Tennessee game when it was all over and just kept sticking it on up in there. 11.58 to go, second quarter. Florida State 14, Auburn 7. Tigers on the move. Fullwood to the 29 and hit hard. Initial hit by 55, Jones. Fullwood's the junior from St. Cloud, Florida. He has 26 yards and two carries. Jackson, by the way, on the day, 10 carries, 74 yards. Pat Dye picking up a gray hair every now and then. And if you're in this business, uh, it's impossible not to. You know, it's, it's much more fun rebuilding a program than it is trying to hang on to a no, number one rating. A lot more pressure. Second down nine, Auburn at the 29 of Florida State. Here's Fullwood, tripped up. Still gets about five or six. But it was 57 Solomon who went over to trip him up way back there at the line of scrimmage. 
Solomon limping off the field, by the way, on the far sideline. The substitute who had come in and played so well. He's going to go over and talk to young Don Falls. At the Florida State 24. Trainer of 29 years at Florida State. They say Solomon has the most ability of all the inside linebacking candidates. That's ahead of McGowan, ahead of Jones, but he just never, never moved forward. He had some, uh, had some uh, academic problems he had to work on. Just now getting into playing shape. Third down for Auburn. The fullback where? Oh, he's a truckload close to the first down at the 20. Takes his 240 pounds forward. This is a game for men in the trenches today, Tim. It really is, Bob. You get uh, Tamborello and a lot blowing out on you along with Yan Cowart, and you give the ball to a guy that weighs almost 250 pounds, he's going to gain some yardage. You look at Solomon, that's a re-injury of a previous knee injury. He runs a 4-6-40, can vertical jump 33 inches. I mean, he has all kinds of athletic ability, and they need that young man in there. He had just been coming back from the academic and from the, the knee. You saw the measurement. It'll be fourth down and inches for Auburn. And they're going to go for it. They went for it earlier on this drive and made it. Thanks to a quick snap count. Florida State jumping offside. They'll be watching for that this time. But can they stop A.G., Ware, or Jackson? Jackson dives for the first down to the 19. Martin Mayhew, 32, with the credit for the tackle. How would you like to be in the middle of that? And Tim Foley, when you were the Dolphins, you saw this some from your backfield position. Exactly. Defensive line for Florida State does a nice job. Auburn gets a little movement, however. It's hard to stop an athlete like that. He left the ground a yard and a half behind the line of scrimmage, and before he was coming down, he was well beyond the first down marker. Look at that. Freddie Jones penetration beyond the line of scrimmage. If he could just have held on, he might have had a chance to stop him, but it looked like Jackson already had the first down. Auburn has rushed for 116 yards, has passed for none today. Jackson driving for about three tough ones on the right side, close to the 15. Pat Washington is 0 for 3 with one interception passing, but you don't have to pass a lot when you can run like Auburn does. So you'll be accused of having a boring offense if you continue in this fashion, but it's consistent, it's powerful, and it can't hurt you. You won't shoot yourself in the foot. You'll end up scoring points, and it may not be as many as you'd like to score, but it's going to be enough to win the game usually, and it will keep your defense off the field. Florida State, 14, Auburn 7, 9-16 to go. Quarter number one, Tigers on the drive. Jackson, 53 of those 79, came in one touchdown run. Jackson again, hit behind the line, knifing in. Alfonso Williams, number 26, another one of the freshmen on the Florida State football team. Blitzing from his safety position, Bob. When they run that play, they run him, a, he gets penetration and then straight down the line of scrimmage. Someone else has containment. His job is to disrupt the timing of the play. Don't let the blocking develop. And that time he made the tackle. We saw Alfonso Williams play very well in our Florida State Memphis State telecast previously. Florida State 4-0, Auburn 3-1, Seminoles ranked 4th, Auburn ranked 12th. Seminoles lead 14-7, third down 5 at the 14. Option play, Washington, good speed. To the 4-yard line, first down, Auburn. 10-yard run by Pat Washington, 6'1", 200 pounds. Tim, Auburn has obviously solved something in their ability to move the ball. The last three drives they couldn't, this time they can. Well, they're just running the football. They're not, they haven't had any penalties on this drive. They've just played mistake-free football, knocking off four and five yards at a crack. Fullwood, A.G. Ware in the backfield. Fullwood. Denied the goal line. Martin Mayhew gets credit for the tackle. In talking to Jack Crow, the offensive coordinator, he really felt that the personality of this team was more like that of a lineman. Just go right after people. None of the fancy schmancy stuff. Just let's, let us take the ball to them. And that's what they're doing right now. And they've got a nice scheme going up front. Die and Crow and the coaches have designed a nice scheme up front of blocking that gets them overloaded and sometimes outmanning Florida State's defense. Oh, it's going to be good on the line of scrimmage this time. 
from the goal line, Reggie Ware. Behind Tamborello and Lott. Reggie Ware's second touchdown of the year. after attempt by number two Chris Johnson freshman from Spanish Fort Alabama Auburn continue to search for a stalwart kicker Johnson very good on the point after touchdowns and we have a tie game it's Auburn 14 Florida State 14 eight minutes 11 seconds to go in the first half from Jordan Hare Stadium 85 degrees partly cloudy we'll be right back who says you can't have it all who says you can't work overtime and take the time to enjoy it all? Who says you can't have super premium taste and a less filling beer? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Missile exercise. Caribbean. Most jobs promise you the world. Birds away. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter or call this number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Minnesota trying to spoil Northwestern's homecoming. Quarterback Ricky Foggy to Valdez Baylor. For the touchdown, it's 14 to nothing Minnesota, but Northwestern is driving. Back to Bob and Tim. So Brent Fullwood comes in for Bo Jackson and to some degree ignited the <laughs> Auburn offense. They drive down and they convert two fourth downs and Fullwood 35 yards in that drive. And they split time on that drive. Fullwood coming in and providing the impetus for the second half of it. And, and he runs with fire. He explodes in there. And uh, I tell you what, that's a, there's a lot of coaches that would like to have the luxury of going to the bench and finding someone like Brent Fullwood sitting there. That drive took eight minutes and two seconds. They're not going to run this one out. It comes down to 20 Keith Ross. There's the statistical information for you on the Auburn Tigers scoring drive. And Reggie Ware put the icing on the cake with his one-yard drive. We might add, in addition to the 25-yard run by Fullwood, there was a good uh, quarterback keeper by Pat Washington and two fourth down conversions. And hello to Eric Thomas, number one. This is the first time behind quarterback for Thomas all year. He has been injured. He was the starter. McManus and Coker had moved ahead. And now we're going to see a little bit different look, probably, to the Florida State offense. And Tim will talk about it in a moment. First and 10 from the 20. Tied at 14. That's not too different. Nothing going on that one. Tony Smith tackled at the line of scrimmage by Gerald Williams. And what does this man, Eric Thomas, bring to this game, the senior? I think what Bobby, you, you ever get a feeling about a player, Bob, or about a team? Bobby Bowden likes this young man as a leader. He started eight games. They've won seven times, the seven of the eight times that he's been underneath the center. And I think why he's interjecting him at this point is that he wants to get him some playing time this year. He doesn't want to use him for the first time with three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Second down 10. Eric Thomas in, in place of Danny McManus. Play fake. Pumps. Upstairs. Going to Phillip Bryant, the deep threat. He catches it, and what an outstanding reception. Kevin Porter, number three, covering. There's a little bumping, no flag. Philip Bryant, a freshman from Bainbridge, Georgia, with a reception from Thomas. They said Thomas couldn't throw long because of the injury. Well, I think whoever said that was wrong. <laughs> Pumps to the right side, and again, Kevin Porter all day long in good shape. He's in perfect position. The ball is thrown to the outside over his outside shoulder. There's a little bit of bumping going on there. Good concentration on the ball by Bryant. Makes the catch. Caught a 68-yarder to ignite Florida State in its comeback against Kansas last year. And uh, just a nice job of keeping his eye on the ball. Tied 14 all. 7.08 to go. Second quarter. Thomas down the middle. Incomplete intended for Holloman. Oh, he was stuck hard at the 25-yard line. 
by 46 Edward Phillips 240 pound linebacker you know Florida State came in with 57 Solomon at 240 at linebacker Auburn counters with Eddie Phillips and Eddie Phillips has made a lot of progress hadn't really seen much playing time until uh, last week against Mississippi and they just really like him he's come on and really taken Ray Corrin's place as uh, as a starting linebacker Thomas one out of two throwing the ball now McManus went out six out of nine for 82 yards. This is second down 10. Seminoles at the 30 of Auburn. Right up the middle, Cletus Jones to the 26-yard line. Russ Carricker, number 47, with a stop for Auburn. What a game we've got here, Tim. You'll notice that Pat Thomas, remember we talked about getting those linebackers to line up a little bit wider, so at least it gave the perception of given the cornerback some help on defense for Auburn so he did they, they that one on one situation wasn't so exposed Thomas is lining up a little bit wider now and is in a position to help both Warren and Porter third and six Wells Smith and Bryant in the ball game from the 26 yard line Eric Thomas hands off to Wells for the 25 nothing going Andre Bruce number 93 with a stop for Auburn in the Auburn defense after a 61 yard pass completion from Eric Thomas to Philip Bryant has really closed the door on the Seminoles and now we're going to have a field goal attempt here by Derek Schmidt. They will put the ball down at the 32. That means it is a 42 yard field goal attempt. Schmidt missed a 28 yarder earlier on the season coming into the game. He was seven of nine. Bad snap. It's up. It's good. There's a penalty marker down. Great job by Kirk Coker on handling the bad snap and a good follow through by Schmidt, but hold it here. Let's see what the penalty is. It was fourth down five. It looks like a long five. I don't think it would have given them the first down anyway. It appeared to be offsides. We'll just hold here and check into their official, Bill Goss. Defense lined up offside. Field goal is good. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Here's a great job by Kirk Coker on a fumbled snap. Snap comes in low, keeps his composure, gets the ball down there. The kicker doesn't let it bother him, and he swings on through it. Beautiful job. 5.48 to go, first half. Florida State 17, Auburn 14. This is Turner Network Television. Now with Castrol, the motor oil engineered for smaller cars, you'll save more than wear and tear on your engine. You'll save on Prestone antifreeze. Simonized wax, uh, STP gas treatment, pure later filters, <laughs> and, and more. In every 12 pack of Castrol, a rebate's worth $45. So Castrol makes things easy on your budget while it makes things easy on your engine. The Castrol Money Back 12 pack. The faces of America, America's individuals, America's strength. American General Life and Accident has known the people of America for 82 years. Working closely with America's individuals is the only way our agents know to develop an insurance program which meets your needs. We believe in America's individuals. We are American General Life and Accident Insurance Company. Last year, 43 Southeastern Conference football players qualified for the academic All-SEC squad, the most to make the honor roll since 1977. In order to qualify, an athlete must be at least a sophomore, a regular performer, and maintain a 3.0 average. That's a B in the classroom. Congratulations to those scholar-athletes, some of the outstanding athletes on the Auburn team. There are more, but, but Cowart, Yan Cowart, very good in the classroom. Kyle Collins, Jeff Parks, the tight end. Jamie Dukes, John Iannata, Dave Shrinker are all stars in the classroom, among some others, for Florida State. A lot of good student-athletes out here on the field today, folks. Here's a good picture from our TBS sports camera. You're the receiver. This view from the end zone. See if you can catch this one. No, you couldn't because it drove you out of the end zone, but a nice job handling the ball, folks. You and Brent Fullwood did a nice job on that. There's the scoring drive, 45 yards, six plays. The key was the long pass. The big play, the 50-yarder from Thomas to Bryant. Two minutes, 23 seconds. The yardage isn't exactly correct on that, I don't think, uh, because we had at least a 50-yard pass play in there. But nevertheless, you get the idea. They got a field goal out of it and lead 17 to 14. Oh, 
Auburn. Sellers, 84. Reeves, 86. And it's tied in. And Bo Jackson on the right side across the 25 to the 26. No half-speed steps on defense for Florida State. Every man, time that man touches the football, or Brent Fullwood for that matter, it could be a score. So you've got to continue to hustle, maintain your lanes of pursuit, and get to the football. You know, and it's against, when you have a running back like that, a reverse is not a bad idea because so teams are so uh, concentrating so much on pursuing to the football and getting there that sometimes they'll forget their reverse responsibilities. Second down for Auburn from the 26. Knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Bo Jackson hit by number 40, Greg Newell. Newell still, I'm sure, in his mind, making up for a what you'd have to frankly call a missed tackle on that 53-yard touchdown run by Bo Jackson early in the game. That was enough for a first down. They move it out to the 31-yard line. Exactly five minutes to go in the first half. When you've got a running back like Jackson, you also, when you get a shot, you like to try to put some leather on him and really put a hurt on him. And many times you'll miss a tackle in that fashion. The idea is grab a hold, get him on the ground, let the second and third man coming in punish him, try to tear the ball out. And here's Brent Fullwood in in place of Jackson. Number 22, not going to go this time, though. The toss is complete over on the right side, left side, to Trey Gaines from a 19. And he's out of bounds at the 36-yard line. That is the first pass completion of the day for Pat Washington and Auburn. By the way, Fred Jones for Florida State, number 55, is out with a sprained knee for Florida State. Let's check on who's in there for him. We have McGowan at one of the linebacker positions, and we'll check the other one. This is a critical position for Florida State. Looks like number 46, Felton Hayes, a freshman. And that's correct. Hayes and McGowan, the linebackers. Second down for Auburn. Washington. Here it comes to 14. Freddie Wagan. He's got nothing but green grass. And number 40, Newell gets the block. Deion Sanders finally chases him down at the 10. Freddie Wagan, the sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama. And Pat Dye pulls a little Bobby Bowden on Bobby Bowden Seminoles. I think they're listening to the broadcast here, but we just got through talking about reverses, and here it comes. They're on play action back into the sideline, and here comes Wagan to the wide side. He's tooling down the sidelines here, and now he throttles back. He's waiting for the lineman to catch up. Jeff Lott shows up. He gets the sideline. If it's not for an excellent effort by Deion Sanders, he's got six. To the nine-yard line, a run of 55 yards. First down goal, Auburn. Bo Jackson. Avoids one tackle. Look at his change of direction to the five. Folks, you are watching the leading Heisman Trophy candidate in Bo Jackson, and he's up close to 100 yards on the day, and we're not at halftime yet. He has four 200-yarders on the year. Those are moves that you see only the great ones make, even though it was just a five-yard run. Second down goal from the five. You have to be able to get some quick yardage on offense. You have to have some big play potential. I don't think they feel comfortable throwing the ball down on their side of the field, so they go to an alternative, a reverse. A.G. Ware, Fullwood in the backfield. Fullwood, hit hard. Fred Jones, 55, is back in despite his sore knee. A good job by Stanley Shiver, again, on a safety blitz, slicing to the inside, turning that running back to the outside. So it's a big play for Auburn here. After the 55-yard end around by Freddie Wagan, Seminole defense has stiffened, allowed five yards to Jackson, nothing on that play. It is third down goal from the five for Auburn. 17-14 Seminoles. Last time down here, they came with the option if they throw the ball, it's going to be crossing pattern to one of the tight ends. You got the linebacker's view. They don't throw the ball. Fullwood hit for a loss of two. Felton Hayes, number 46, the weak side linebacker, made the play. And in comes the kicking team. Number eight, Chris Knapp, will come in to attempt the field goal for Auburn. This is, frankly, a problem area for Auburn. This should be a chip shot. They'll spot it at about the 24, so it's a 34-yard attempt. But remember, Derek Schmidt missed a 28-yarder earlier for FSU. Knapp 
is two out of two kicking. They've been short ones. This one's good. We have a tie game. 17-17. 2.35 to go in the half. Hold everything. Penalty marker on the play. It's offside Seminoles. It'll be declined. Field goal count 17-17. We'll be right back. Wherever Buick Electra went in the world, it left behind new standards of luxury and performance. See if Buick Electra lives up to the highest standard of all. Yours. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't be buttoned up and down to earth underneath it all? Who says you can't have super premium taste and a less filling beer? Two thirty-five to go in this first half, and it is 17-17. 74 yards for the Tigers, 313, 23-yard field goal by Knapp, but the key play was the 55-yard end around by the young sophomore split end Freddie Wagan that took it down to the 10-yard line. Seminole stiffened on defense there, though, and we have an excellent game. 20 Ross and 44 Wells are back deep for the Seminoles. It will not matter, though, as the ball is hit out of the end zone. Good job of kickoff kicking by Chris Johnson, another freshman kicker for Auburn. So the Seminoles bring it out to their 20, first down 10, with 2.35 to go in the half. And the way we've been going, that's plenty of time for both teams to have 80-yard drives. Right, yeah. <laughs> Could be 30 to nothing by the time the half's over. I'd like to say hi to Chris Carrick. He's watching from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, from the hospital there, and uh, had a freak accident that... Uh, Lost some fingers on his left hand, but he's got a great spirit. Hard to come back strong. First down 10 Seminoles. Eric Thomas at the quarterback position. We're tied at 17. Here's Tony Smith. That's a couple of blocks. Look at the pursuit. Now that's great play both ways. Excellent defensive coverage by Auburn and some intelligent running and block usage by 49 Tony Smith for only a three-yard gain. The type of defense that Auburn is playing uh, is more susceptible to being attacked during uh, through the air, as you see Tony Smith uh, limping off the field. Freshman 27, Victor Floyd, in there in place of Smith. We'll check on Smith's ankle. See how that is. Looks like an ankle. Second down, seven Seminoles. 96 Panton tight end switches over here to the near side. Pitch to Floyd, the freshman. Cuts against the grain. Nice move. To the 38 yard line. All oh, these teams are so loaded with talents on both sides of the ball. Victor Floyd, the freshman from Pensacola. Look at this move here now. He takes it back. He beats Gerald Williams. Now takes it upfield and he ducked inside a couple other folks. Tommy Powell back there. Arthur Johnson comes over to clean up on him as Porter arrives. They spot it just outside the 37-yard line. First down, 10 Seminoles, 1.31 to go. First half tied at 17. I'm continually amazed with the ability and poise of some of these freshmen that we're seeing, Bob. Here's Victor Floyd again, hitting the backfield this time. Nothing going down at the 33. Excellent penetration by 94 Harold Hallman. You also see 46 Eddie Phillips, who had made some penetration, but it was the nose guard who made the play that time. Loss of five on the play. He had a, he had a career last year against FSU in that 42-41 game. Bobby Bowden talking to Wayne McDuffie upstairs. He wants a timeout. Clock ticking, 50 seconds. He can't seem to get the attention of his quarterback, however. He got the attention of one of the receivers on the far side. Anybody can call a timeout, by the way, and are requested from the official. And Florida State gets the timeout, but they lose uh, about 14 seconds before Bowden can get the timeout called. It'll be second and 15 from the 33 when we return. This is Turner Network Television. 
by Hallman stopping Floyd in the backfield. It's second down 15 Seminoles from their own 33. 45 seconds to go in the second quarter. Auburn has two timeouts remaining. Florida State only one. We are tied at 17. 45 seconds. Let's see. Florida State can probably get underway 15 to 20 plays in 45 seconds the way they've been playing today. And Auburn can come back and start a drive. Let's see what happens. They split Hassan Jones and Darren Hulliman wide to the left side. Split their backs in the backfield. They're Wells and Floyd. Eric Thomas under pressure. Incomplete. Attempted for Chuck Wells, but Wells intelligently dropped that forward pass. He'd have been thrown for about a five-yard loss had he caught it. Excellent quarterback pressure from Gerald Robinson, who frankly has not been playing a great deal in this game, but he is really the best quarterback pressure player on the part of the Auburn team, and he showed you why right then against a very mobile Eric Thomas. So now we're down to third down 15, 37 seconds remaining in the half. Auburn may have an opportunity to have this ball again unless uh, Florida State can convert 15 or more yards on this play. Auburn's got a special defense that they sometimes use in passing in possession situations like this, but they don't seem to be lined up in it. Watch down the middle, about 15 to 20 yards deep. Robinson, it is complete to Hassan Jones to the 42-yard line, first down, 28 seconds remaining and the clock stops excellent pressure but Thomas stepped up there and avoided the pressure from Robinson and completed it to Hassan Jones this area was open on the play before and Hassan Jones finds the open area as Thomas avoids the sack from Robinson Robinson just not mobile enough he's his ankle is bothering him and he just can't generate the mobility to make the play see he can't make the turn to grab Thomas look at that what an effort but there was such a wide open gap down the middle at 20 yards deep. Jones had time to run to the football. And that's why Bobby Bowden likes that young man right there. Just, you know, the, the guts to stand in there and let that one go. I'd, I'd have been digging for grass. Eric Thomas had injured his shoulder, had, had been really out of the quarterback position and, and picture for Florida State. It was McManus, Coker, Chip Ferguson, a freshman. He was even moved to wide receiver because he's such a good athlete and because Bowden feels that his presence on the offensive team is so important. Thomas starts healing slower and then more fast, then has a good week of practice or two, and Bobby Bowden said, frankly, he didn't know exactly what to do at quarterback coming into this game, decided to start with McManus, but said, don't be surprised if you see us with Eric Thomas, and he has come in here and played well in relief. Next week, we're very happy to report that we will have the Tennessee-Alabama telecast at 12.30 Eastern time from Birmingham. Tennessee playing Florida. They were tied nothing-nothing last we heard. Alabama playing Penn State later today. 28 seconds to go in this half, first half. First and 10, Seminoles from the 42. Thomas with a lot of time. Hit from behind! <laughs> Just as I said it, here comes Andre Bruce. Thomas was winding up, looking deep for Jones, who was deep and open a little bit. But too much time required, and Eric Thomas was really slammed from behind. Thomas looking downfield. He's going to the outside. The receivers are breaking in. Now back out to the corner as he releases the ball. Didn't have enough time to get it off. Good pass rush by the uh, Auburn front. But, Bob, I'm telling you, that area is still open down the middle. Unless Auburn goes to that defense where they let Tommy Powell sit in that slot, they can get it in there on him. Well, this will be second down 10 from the 42-yard line of Auburn. 22 seconds remaining in the half. Florida State has no timeouts remaining. Look at those passing statistics. 30 Holloman and 27 Floyd in the backfield. Play fake. Wide open. Bryant down to the 23-yard line. Clock will stop at 13 seconds for the sticks to move. Remember, Florida State with no timeouts. It is tied 17-17. 13 seconds to go until halftime. Play was called in the previous huddle. Everybody lining up. Clock has not started yet. Now it starts. 12, 11, and ticking. Thomas throws it out of bounds to stop the clock with eight seconds to go. This is definitely field goal range for Florida State. There are eight seconds remaining in the half, and I believe Bobby Bowden is deciding to send Derek Schmidt in. Derek Schmidt hit a field goal earlier of 42 yards, but missed a 28-yarder. This one will be exactly 40 yards. It's not worth the risk of running another play. 
the odds of you scoring a touchdown on it are extremely minimal. End zone view. He missed this one by a country mile. I don't know what happened there. Schmidt having a rough day. He's only one out of three. And Auburn denies Florida State any points as we're down to four seconds to go in the half. And it'll be Auburn football for one play. Don't know what happened. Let's see. Just missed it, folks. He looks uh, out of kilter on that play. Not well balanced on the kick and the follow through. It looks like his head's coming up a little quickly. I mean, he knows both the ones he missed. He knew as soon as it left his foot. And that's uh, usually when you miss, you don't know till you look up. Right, Bobby? <laughs> I know about that with golf. Burt Reynolds. We're going to have a movie for you at halftime with Burt Reynolds and some interesting stats on one of the former FSU players. Both schools marching bands, scores and highlights from around the country, some great games going on today. Auburn decides to stay out of trouble deep in their own territory, let the clock run out. What a first half we've had. Auburn 17, Florida State 17. It has been a beauty, and uh, we expect no less in the second half. Stay with us for our halftime activities from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Stadium, Florida State's marching band on the field. We're going to hear some of their performance a little bit later, but right now we have a trivia question for all you sports and theater buffs, and that question is what former FSU player became a movie star and was the only one to ever star on a movie with, among others, Clint Eastwood? Here's a hint. Have you guessed it? There's the answer. <laughs> Burt Reynolds. Actually, he was a player at Florida State from 54 through 57. He was in City Heat, among others. Here he is in an actual game against Auburn in 1954. Burt Reynolds. And watch this move. Cuts to the left side. Pretty good running back, eh, folks? He came as a heralded freshman in 54 from West Palm Beach. Played as a freshman. And many people feel he could have been a star at Florida State, but he hurt his knee in an auto accident and started participating more on the theater stage than he did the football field. Of course, went on to all the fame that we know him. Uh, he still is a very big Florida State fan. Bobby Bowden called Burt right before the Florida State-Nebraska game to tell him they were thinking of him. And by the way, in that backfield of Auburn, in that picture you saw right there was Bob James, number 23, the former governor of Alabama. So there's the pictures and answers to our trivia quiz, which we hope you enjoyed about Burt Reynolds. And now we're going to watch the Florida State University marching chiefs on the field. The director is Dr. Bentley Shellhammer. Drum major is Rodney Dorsey. And this is halftime music entitled Dance, Dance, Dance. 